unworthiness, self-reproach, and hoping only in the mercy of God. Three Psalms from the Spiritual Psalter by St. Ephraim the Syrian Psalm 11 I can control neither myself nor the enemy. Help me, O Lord. No one can heal my disease except he who knows the depths of the heart. How many times have I set boundaries for myself and built walls between myself and sin? But my thoughts transgressed the boundaries, and my will tore down the walls. For the boundaries were not secured by fear of God, and the walls were not founded on sincere repentance. And again I knock at the door, that it may be open for me. I do not cease to ask that I may receive what I request. And I know no shame in seeking thy mercy, O Lord. O Lord, my Savior, why hast thou forsaken me? Have mercy on me, O only lover of mankind. Save me, a sinner, thou only sinless one. Wrench me from the mire of my iniquities, that I may not be forever sullied by them. Deliver me from the jaws of the enemy, who roars like a lion and desires to swallow me up. Rouse thy strength and come that thou mightest save me. Beam thy lightning, and disperse his power, that he may be struck with fear and flee from thy face. For he has not the strength to stand before thee, and before the face of those who love thee. As soon as he perceives a sign of thy grace, he is taken with fear of thee, and withdraws from such with shame. And now, O Master, save me, for I flee to thee. Psalm 55 How to Scrutinize and Reproach Yourself After having gained knowledge of the truth, I have become a brawler and an offender. I argue over trifles. I have become envious of and callous toward my neighbor, merciless towards beggars, wrathful, argumentative, obstinate, slothful, irritable. I harbor evil thoughts. I love fancy clothing. And to this day I have many corrupt thoughts and fits of selfishness, gluttony, sensuality, vainglory, arrogance, lust, gossiping, breaking of fasts, despondency, rivalry, and indignation. I am worthless, but think much of myself. I lie constantly, but get angry with liars. I defile the temple of my body with wanton thoughts, but sternly judge the wanton. I condemn those who fall, but myself fall constantly. I condemn slanderers and thieves, but am myself both a thief and a slanderer. I walk with a bright countenance, although I am altogether impure. In churches and at banquets I always want to take the place of honor. I see hermits and act dignified. I see monks and I become pompous. I strive to appear pleasing to women, dignified to strangers, intelligent and reasonable to my neighbors, superior to intellectuals. With the righteous I act as if I possess vast wisdom, the unintelligent I disdain as illiterates. If I am offended, I take revenge. If I am honored, I shun those who honor me. If someone demands of me what is rightfully his, I start a suit. And those who tell me the truth I consider enemies. When my error is exposed, I get angry but I am not so dissatisfied when people flatter me. I do not want to honor those who are worthy, but I myself, who am unworthy, demand honor. I do not want to tire myself with work, but if someone fails to serve me, I get angry with him. I do not want to walk among laborers, but if someone fails to help me in my work, I slander him. I arrogantly deny my brother when he is in need, but when I have need of something... I turn to him. I hate those who are ill, but when I myself am ill, I wish that everyone would love me. I do not want to know those who are higher than I, and I scorn those who are lower. If I abstain from indulging my foolish desires, I praise myself vaingloriously. If I succeed in vigilance, I fall into the snares of conceit and contradiction. If I refrain from eating, I drown in pride and arrogance. If I am wakeful in prayer, I am vanquished by irritability and wrath. If I see virtue in someone, I studiously ignore him. I have scorned worldly pleasures, but do not abandon my vain desire for them. 
If I see a woman, I go into raptures. To all appearances, I am wise in humility, but in my soul I am haughty. I seem not to be acquisitive, but in reality, I suffer from a mania for possessions. And what good is it to dwell on such things? I appear to have forsaken the world, but in fact I still think about worldly things all the time. During services, I always occupy myself with conversations, wandering thoughts, and vain recollections. During meals, I indulge in idle chatter. I yearn for gifts. I participate in the sinful falls of others and engage in ruinous rivalry. Such is my life. With what vileness do I obstruct my own salvation? In my arrogance, my vain glory does not permit me to think about my sores that I might cure myself. Behold my virtuous feats. See how vast are the regiments of sins which the enemy sends to campaign against me. Yet in the face of all this, I who am wretched endeavor to boast of sanctity. I live in sin, but want others to honor me as a righteous man. In all this I have but one thing to say in my defense. The devil has ensnared me. But this did not suffice to absolve Adam of his sin. Cain was, of course, also prompted by the devil, but he did not escape condemnation either. What shall I do if the Lord comes to me? I have no means to justify my negligence. I fear that I shall be numbered among those whom Paul called vessels of wrath, who will share the devil's fate and whom God, because of their contempt for him, has committed to the passions of degradation. Thus, there is the danger that I will be sentenced to the same fate. If thou wouldst save me, who am unworthy, O merciful Lord, vouchsafe me a sinner repentance. Enliven my soul, deadened by sins, O giver of life. Drive out the stony hardness that is in my miserable heart, and grant me a fountain of contrition, O thou who didst pour forth life unto us from thy life-creating rib. Psalm 131 All my hope is in God's mercy. Thy grace has made it possible for me to call upon thy name, O Lord. O only good one, who has created us all, forgive the transgressions and sins of thy sinful and ungrateful servant. I know, O Lord, that my sins exceed those of all other men, but I have as my refuge the abyss of thy compassions, which exceeds all things. I am confident that thou wilt accept and have mercy on all who approach thy goodness. For it pleases thee to behold repentance, and thou rejoicest at the ascetic struggles of thy servants. Grant me, thine unworthy servant, tears, that with an enlightened mind, with love and faith, I may entreat thine incomparable goodness and be cured of my hidden sores. Show miserable me thy charity, deliver me from the torment I deserve. May thy grace be preached all about, to the benefit both of the countless multitudes who are careless and me as well. As thou didst fill the water pots with thy blessing, so likewise fill my heart with thy grace and thy goodness. When a caring mother is rejected by her child, she does not scorn him, for her motherly care triumphs over all. May my sins likewise not surpass thy grace. I know that I will be punished even for idle words, for evil thoughts, for mere desire. Yet as soon as an opportunity to satisfy my pleasures presents itself, I immediately forget everything, and like a fool, indulge in all manner of sin. I am a vainglorious, wrathful cripple, a lazy, dissolute glutton, a sensualist covered with impurities who hourly strays into error, and I do not realize it. Only hope in the manifestation of thy grace, O man-befriending master, consoles me and keeps me from despair. Whether thou so desirest or not, save me, O all-good Lord, according to thy great kindness.